Mamsa or chief administrator, a forward-thinking pragmatic leader or a polarizing Hindu fanatic, a developmentalist or a fundamentalist, India's future prime minister or political pariah. Narendra Modi has been called all this and more. You can love him or hate him, but you cannot ignore the Modi phenomenon. Hello and welcome to the Ministers of Change. I'm Shireen Khan. This week we deconstruct one of India's most controversial and perhaps one of its most effective leaders. The politics of Narendra Modi can be summed up in one word, which is development. A man who evokes shock and awe. A man who's changed the way the world looks at Gandhi's Gujarat. Gujarat was not a state where people had a sense of self-identity. Narendra Modi has created a political identity. That is one of his biggest political assets. We find out if the stains of 2002 have faded or just been covered up with images of vibrant Gujarat. Narendra Modi ke andar apne kamini dekhne jayenge to Manmohan Singh ki kamini niklegi. Wo leke apna chalenge to zindagi aage nahi badhegi. Just because he was bad with the Muslims, we thought he'll be bad all around. But uh, he's proved to be good in some respects. And we try and understand why industry loves Narendra Modi. If there is a CEO in this country, there is no company, no sector, no state, no country, it is Shri Narendra Modi. बिहार का मुख्यमंत्री और गुजरात का मुख्यमंत्री इन्होंने जो ग्राम विकास का काम किया इस प्रकार का काम हर हर मुख्यमंत्री ने करना चाहिए This statement by India's latest national hero evoked reactions so extreme that Anna Hazare was forced to issue a retraction a few days later This incident more than anything else illustrates the precariousness of Narendra Modi's position in Indian politics नरेंद्र दामोदर दास मोदी ईश्वर ना नामे सौगंध लोचू के कार्य On the one hand his popularity remains undiminished in Gujarat he is the state's longest serving chief minister having completed almost a decade in office but outside the state he somewhat of a pariah Gujarat सरकार चलाने वाले रूपे बेईमानी दरबार मार के उसको डाल BJP's star campaigner during the 2009 general elections, Modi was kept out of both Bihar and Orissa. Two states whose chief ministers tread on the path of Modi's economic development. Like him, they stand for being personally incorruptible but don't want to be associated with his bipartisan politics. Almost a unique formula which is being tried out. There is a clear emphasis and talk, public talk of governance and development, which is somewhat unusual for even for Gujarat. Because earlier governance was talked about in terms of GDP figures. Now it's being talked about in terms of what ordinary people get. There is undoubtedly the image of the chief minister as being a very honest person. As one of his famous advertisements says, said, na khata hu, na khane deta hu. That's what brought him to power. With this image, and everyone believes in that. Third, there is that thing about Gujarati asmita. Narendra, you know, Gujarat was not a state where people had a sense of self-identity. I am a Gujarati. This was not a Gujarat self-identity. Narendra Modi has created a political identity, a sense of pride, a sense of belonging. And he has, that is one of his biggest political assets that he has used. 2002 will go down in Gujarat's history as the year of blind irony. Forced to submit his resignation and dissolve the Legislative Assembly following the Godhra pogrom, Narendra Modi went into the elections. Modi was voted to office by a thumping majority, biggest in the districts where the bloodshed was worst. Modi has been able to give the people of Gujarat the feeling that the entire country is against them. They are kind of a besieged lot, you know. 
Gujarati pride is at stake, which is why I think Modi would not be a very good national candidate because you know of his Gujarat centric way of looking at politics, and he's plumbed that uh, you know vein very very successfully. The Narendra Modi of 2002 was, as a Supreme Court judgment described him, Gujarat's Nero, who looked elsewhere while fires burnt, and at worst he actively colluded in the carnage. But while investigations continue, new evidence reveals itself and witnesses find a voice. Narendra Modi has moved on. In 2007, his re-election campaign spoke not of hardline Hinduism, but of Gujarat's 11% growth story, of a tanker fee Gujarat, of Jyoti Gram, a scheme that had brought 24 by 7 electricity to homes and most importantly, Modi cast the elections as a referendum on his rule relegating even his own political party to the background. The red tape was cut out. Gujarat has a corruption-free regime, relative of course, but compared to other states, every industrialist says that Gujarat is relatively corruption-free. So even within the system, working within the constraints of the system, I think Gujarat has really cleaned up its act. The bureaucrats are committed. The vibrant Gujarat has brought so much investment from abroad to uh, Gujarat. So on the whole, a clean administration, a purposeful and decisive administration has uh, generated the results which places Gujarat on top of India's growth story among the states. Sade Panch Karod Mere Gujarati Mere Parivar Jan. Jabbi Me Miltahu, Jisko Me Miltahu, Ek Parivar House Miltahu. Riyaz and his family belong to Ahmedabad's Juhapura area, popularly called Chota Pakistan, where few others agree to talk on camera. Most of the 4.5 lakh Muslims in this urban sprawl don't have too many opportunities and are hardly part of the vibrant Gujarat story. A study by the National Council for Applied Economic Research has found that 60% of Gujarat's Muslims live in urban areas, but their poverty is eight times more than high caste Hindus and 50% more than OBCs. And while at an all India level their share in the manufacturing and organized sector is 21%, in Gujarat it's merely 13% much lower than Maharashtra at 25% and West Bengal at 21%. But they do have the basics, Bichli, Sarak, Pani, and for now, it seems enough. We don't have any loan for everyone, we are not human. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. We can't say anything, now the government is working on its own. The one thing in Hindu-Muslim is in Hindu in Hindustan, in Gujarat, we have to keep it in mind. सलमान भाई इतना ध्यान नहीं दे रहे हैं मतलब थोड़ा उल्टा थोड़ा मतलब देते हैं पन कम दे रहे हैं तभी मोदी जी हमें एजुकेशन का ऊपर पूरा ध्यान देते हैं बच्चों को मुस्लिम जो कमेंट माइनॉरिटी है उसका भी देश के अंदर गुजरात के अंदर जो अभी काम जो किया है सबसे अच्छा मच्छा है देहातों में काम His detractors will not let him forget 2002, but Narendra Modi's transformation from an RSS Pracharak to Gujarat's chief executive officer is now nearly complete. In 2001, Modi took over from Keshubhai Patel following a backroom coup of sorts. He inherited a state which was corrupt and fractured. Gujarat's double-digit growth had come to a grinding halt and fresh investments were hard to come by. Narendra Modi brought back iron-fisted governance and leverage the power of the state's industrial base and solid infrastructure to put Gujarat back on track. When I became the Prime Minister, I didn't fight in my life. Even in school, I didn't fight in my school. This register of how he's performed as a Chief Minister, which I would give him a BEP plus. And uh, just because he was bad with the Muslims, we thought he'd be bad all around. Or many thoughts, shall we say. But uh, he's proved to be good in some respects. Gujarat has always been a business-friendly state. Gujarat has always had better governance 
than others. Even in the 60s, I remember, there were things that Gujarat was doing. Um, however, you have to give Narendra Modi a lot of credit because what he has done is he has come and catalyzed a lot of things which were on a, on a certain track but he's just put them up. Coming up next, we examine the importance of inheritance in Narendra Modi's meteoric rise and we understand how he's keeping the golden wheel spinning in Gujarat. Gujarat's development has been much more rapid. Policies have been very good. So I would say in the last uh, eight or ten years, Gujarat has uh, done very well in terms of attracting investment. Focus, speedy decision making and a very proactive approach towards making industry feel welcome. I would put Mr. Modi's management style as that of corporate uh, CEO. The bureaucracy was also extremely transparent, extremely positive, uh, virtually no red tapeism. In 1960, when the state of Gujarat was cut out from Bombay Presidency, it ranked 8th amongst Indian states in terms of GDP. The creation of Gujarat's massive private ports and a favourable industrial policy through the 1970s and 80s saw Surat, Baroda, Ankleshwar, Rajkot become hubs for a booming petrochemical and textile industry. Even today, Gujarat is second only to Maharashtra in terms of industrialization, and the gap is slowly closing. The Gujarat model is public-private partnership. Government is all and all, I don't believe. My motto is minimum government, maximum governance. Gujarat has been a state which has been friendly to investment. It's a very business-oriented state. But of late, I would say uh, Gujarat's development has been much more rapid. Policies have been very good. So I would say in the last uh, 8 or 10 years, Gujarat has uh, done very well in terms of attracting investment. And it is for this that Narendra Modi can take credit. For giving Gujarat's golden wheel some much needed talk in the form of effective governance and 21st century style marketing. In the Gujarat, the, the, the economic wheel has always been spinning well. But I think in this government has done a few things. One the wheel is certainly spinning faster and that is to do with a combination of focus, speedy decision making and a very proactive approach towards making industry feel welcome. You know, the real issue in these vibrant Gujarat seminars or issues is not the total quantum of zeros that add up to the amount of investment committed. It is giving a clear message politically and bureaucratically that economic development, industrialization, job creation are very, very important. It is an engine for economic growth and for removal of poverty and that the political establishment supported by the bureaucratic establishment will go out of their way to make fresh investments feel welcome and comfortable. The last vibrant Gujarat summit saw MOUs worth $400 billion being signed. Only a fraction of these will translate into projects on ground, but vibrant Gujarat really isn't about the zeros. It's also an overt exercise in building brand Modi. If one Narendra Bhai can do so much for Gujarat, imagine what is the possibility for India by having Narendra Bhai as the next leader of India. 
Some Gujarat watchers say one of the reasons industry appreciates Modi is because in him, it sees a reflection of itself. Mr. Modi is even-handed. He does not do favours to X and uh, get after Y. He is even-handed in his policies. His policies are transparent. Now, similarly, industrialists are very happy. They say Mr. Modi uh, always delivers on what he says. The so-called elite and the uh, you know newspaper reading classes, they like to see a person who takes decisions, you know, uh, who's a tough guy, and who's personally, uh, you know, no money sticks to that person. What happens around is not so important. No money sticks to that person. And when that happens, people love it. I call it them Gujarat Sarkar Private Limited. And I consider Narendra Mozi as a CEO. And Vidhan Sabha, the state assembly is like a director board meeting, where sometimes we have a two-day session or three-day session. I don't know. Director board meetings, I understand two days, three days. But nowadays, our assemblies are running that way. And if you just look at the proceeding of assemblies, you will see that people are not asking questions. And those who ask too many questions are shown the door. In 2008, when Narendra Modi took over as chief minister for his third tenure, almost two dozen party workers were given marching orders. Those included former MLAs. For a Parivar that prides itself in being a faceless collective, Narendra Modi is a one-man show, even alienating VHP strongman Praveen Togadia in Gujarat. But Modi isn't bothered, not yet anyway, and that's because he is delivering on the plank that matters the most, the plank of development. Like Nitish Kumar in Bihar, Modi is more comfortable depending on bureaucrats rather than his own party men. I would put Mr. Modi's management style as that of corporate uh, CEO. And I think he runs uh, the government of Gujarat with very clear outcomes, not inputs. Personal accountability is given to people at the district collector level, at the IS level, and, and easy access to him. So he is not just a strategic thinker, he's also a man who is involved in the execution part of it as well. Today, Ahmedabad is one of the only cities in the country that has a functional BRT. This 40-kilometer Janmar came up in less than four years and today ferries close to one lakh people across the city every day. The Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation is now targeting 90 kilometers by 2014 and this when complete will bring mass transport to four lakh people per day. Most other states where we work or most other cities, there's a bureaucratic change every two, three years. I mean here, the chief minister at some level was bought into the project. He was convinced that he needed a senior IS officer to be the municipal commissioner to lead the project. And so, you know, that's what you have. Since 2006, this one person has been leading the two big projects in Ahmedabad, the BRT and the Riverfront project. And, you know, these are complicated projects, multiple stakeholders, uh, you know, lots of incumbents. But he's, he's, he stood behind the designers of the project and he's taken the bold decisions it requires. This plant to manufacture Delhi Metro wagons came up in 18 months flat. An internal record of sorts for French MNC Bombardier, who chose this site at Savli near Baroda over Delhi and Hyderabad because of minimum government and maximum governance. So whether it, it was an industry minister or the finance minister, I think they were very clearly hungry to the fact that they must have good industrial setup, expansions of industrial setup. So you saw a good element on the political side. But I think more importantly, if I were to say that I think this positivity also rubs off to the bureaucracy. So when I looked at the bureaucracy, I think the bureaucracy was also extremely transparent, extremely positive, uh, virtually no red tapeism. And it is this apparent openness and ease of doing business along with A-class infrastructure that seems to make Gujarat an ideal investment destination. They had all the pluses. You had abundance of power, you had uh, good roads. We, for our kind of products, we were looking at port connectivity. You had good private ports here. You had uh, also a very good uh, labor management relationships. We had a good history of very low level of man hours lost during strikes and lockouts and so on. Those who track the Gujarat story say the Modi phenomena is on account of an India that's fed up with inefficiency and missed opportunities over the past 50 years. But politics is not just about a more effective delivery system or flourishing business. It is about social change and distributive justice. And on that aspect, the Gujarat story remains incomplete. 
Next week on the Ministers of Change, we find out how the Narendra Modi government has been able to clear projects like the prestigious Tata Motors Nano project, which was pushed out of Singur to Sanand in just three days. And what's worth emulating from the Modi model of development. People think that Government of Gujarat creates, gives great incentives for people to come over there. They give great administration. We are policy-driven state. And because of the policy-driven state, we move much, much faster. Most state governments start reacting after they have got a request from industry. Whereas in Gujarat, they have a vision of acquiring before the requests come in. What would you need to do in order to get clearances in three days for a mega project? You would have to reduce all your procedures to nil. It will be unfair to damn Mr. Modi if he does and damn him if he doesn't.